Take a listen to this woman at the Madison Square Garden rally last night. The Chinese uh, first generation, we love Trump uh, from uh, our bottom of the heart because we know Trump is the only one can save America. Kamala is uh, so stupid. She is so low. IQ equal no Q, no qualification to be the president. You shall stay away from that position. You already lost the position. You lost the, our trust. You lost the, our vote. You just you need to go home, to stay home. You cannot do anything to save America. You are so stupid. You don't know anything. You cannot even answer any question from the camera, from all the media, how you can be on the stage to fight home for America, to protect American people, to protect all the world. You are not qualified. You just need to go home. Let Trump to save America, to save the world, to put America first. If America to be strong, to be saved, and then America can save the whole world. Trump, wow. we love you. We love you forever. Never ever surrender. Fight, fight, fight. Fight for Trump. Fight, fight, fight. That's some passion. That's some passion. And look at a first generation Chinese American and somebody might get upset about that and say, well, you know, they don't like the way she's talking about Kamala and perhaps something's getting lost in translation there. But I'll tell you this, she's got some passion. She's got a lot of passion there and you're seeing people across the board. I mean, just very different groups, right? That you wouldn't necessarily assume, oh, wow, they're going to love Trump. And yet they do. Hello. Welcome to the program, everyone. We got a big show here for you today. As we look at what happened there, what transpired at that rally last night, Donald Trump talking about the importance, for example, of a border, the importance of having a sound economy, all these policy issues that, frankly, the left has so spectacularly failed on, he's promising, and yet they're going to label him, you know what, this, that, and the other for daring to say these things. Let's take a quick listen of what transpired there on stage at Madison Square Garden, where Tens of thousands, 20,000 people were there to hear him speak. Thousands more outside. Quite a sight. It's time to go to bed. <laughs> to his and her egregious hurricane response, the worst response in North Carolina and other states since Katrina, but I think it was even worse than Katrina. They haven't even responded in North Carolina. They haven't even responded. There's nobody. They don't see any FEMA. You know why? They spent their money on bringing in illegal migrants. So they didn't have money for Georgia and North Carolina and Alabama and Tennessee and Florida and South Carolina. They didn't have any money for them. They spent all of their money on bringing in illegal immigrants and flying them in by beautiful jet planes they flew in. We just found that about a year and a half ago. Remember, we said, what's going on? Those planes, a lot of planes going over there. What are they? They would fly them into the middle of our country, our beautiful, beautiful country. And you know what happened? You take a look at Springfield, Ohio. Okay. So the left is all worked up about this. They say this is fake news. Of course, we did hear. Mayorkas himself say that they were running out of money. FEMA was running out of money. And there's been a lot of frustration because, you know, the way these budgets are allocated, it seemed as though a lot of money indeed was spent on trying to bring an ever increasing number of migrants into various states. And now, you know, here we are during hurricane season and we don't have money to deal with the FEMA victims. And so, you know, I realize they're probably two different pools of money, but the optics of that one, they don't look very good. They really don't look very good. And you know, before you, you, you jump over Trump for saying he shouldn't make this criticism, let's be very clear, the mainstream media made that criticism of Bush however many years ago with Hurricane Katrina. I was one of them. I was reporting at CBS at the time and I did a bunch of stories on those trailers that were lined up 
after Hurricane Katrina, and FEMA did a terrible job. Remember Brownie, okay? So this was a big event. Elon Musk was there. Tucker Carlson was there. Tulsi Gabbard was there. Vivek Ramaswamy was there. RFK Jr. was there. Hulk Hogan was there. You had uh, just quite a crew. Melania Trump was there. Melania Trump made an appearance. But let's listen to Elon for a second. This has the left so worked up. But America is just not, not gonna, it's just going to be great. America is going to reach heights that it has never seen before. The future is going to be amazing. <laughs> now, You guys are awesome. Honestly, this is like... <laughs> yeah. I mean, th this, is, this, is like, this is the kind of positive energy that America is all about. Yeah. USA, 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 far! Yes. <laughs> so, do you remember once they tried that? Dougie, who is running for first gentleman, Kamala's husband was at that rally and he's like, USA, USA, and nobody would say anything. And he's like, come on, you could say it. And still nobody said anything. Nobody was willing to chant USA, USA, USA. Well, the fact that he's doing that, the fact that they're talking about maybe, you know, you ought to rethink the budget and not spend a whole bunch on moving migrants into states like Texas, Georgia, and anywhere else they're trying to influence, I don't know, Pennsylvania, before... You know, it's good to have a little patriotism, but you're not allowed to have any patriotism. No, no, no. No, because somehow that could be misconstrued with actually having a hate rally. I mean, this one is really starting to get on my nerves. I'm going to tell you that as an American, as a patriot, as somebody who really has spent a lot of time on understanding history, absorbing history. I was a history major in undergrad at Columbia. I think it's pretty damn insulting to the so many, the millions of Jews that died in World War II, to all of those that died, is it U.S. troops, Allied troops fighting in World War II, that this is the place they keep going to over and over and over again, only because he's suggesting that we keep a strong economy and that we actually have a border, for goodness sakes. Ladies and gentlemen, every other country in the darn world has a border, but, but somehow it's, it's something you're right not allowed now. to say. You see it Here there on your screen. In that place, is particularly chilling. Because in 1939, more than 20,000 supporters of a different fascist leader. Okay, so you can't have a rally at Madison Square Garden, whereas, like, you know, you got 20,000 people coming, but you, you can't have that rally in Madison Square Garden because there was something there many, many years before. You see what they're doing and where they're going. It's just disgusting. Of Hitler packed the garden for a so called pro America rally. A rally where speakers voiced anti-Semitic rhetoric from a stage draped with Nazi banners. When a Jewish protester rushed the stage, the Associated Press reported, quote, instantly, a dozen or more stormtroopers set upon him, knocking him down and beating him as he held his head in his arms. Most of his clothing was torn from his body. Later, he was booked for disorderly conduct. Now, Against that backdrop of history, Donald Trump, the man who has threatened to use the military against opponents he calls enemies from within, who has threatened to use, use the troops to quell what he says are lawless cities and to use those troops to carry out mass deportations of immigrants, is once again turning Madison Square Garden into a staging ground for extremism. Guys, this is just getting nauseating. Okay, the mainstream media keeps lying to us over and over and over again. And when that doesn't work, they say, okay, he's going to be a fascist dictator. This is the reincarnation of Hitler. I mean, they have gone so extreme with all of this. I'm sorry, guys. You know, at some point, it's the little boy who cried wolf. Enough, enough. Like, fight on policy, would you? 
fight because you care about this country and you actually have a decent economic policy to put forward and a decent border policy and you actually care about peace in the world. That's what actually matters. Instead, instead, we got this idiot who, by the way, lost out on a ton of jobs that Jeff Bezos and Amazon could have given her for good old Queens. You got AOC who really needs to go back to the high school musical Grease and work on actually her singing and dancing a little bit more. AOC going on MSNBC spouting this nonsense. This was not, this was a hate rally. Mm -hmm. This was not just a presidential rally. This was also not just a campaign rally. I think it's very important for people to understand that these are many January 6 rallies. These are many stop the steal rallies. These are rallies to prime an electorate into rejecting the results of an election if it doesn't go the way that they want. Because Donald Trump and that in entire cadre of people up on that stage, Stephen Miller, et cetera, do not respect the law of the United States of America. The reason that I, the I, rhetoric I, has gotten this far. I, I, I just think we have to go back And here. they either want to win. Stephen Miller doesn't respect the law of the United States because he doesn't believe that handouts should be given to somebody just because of the color of their skin. Do you remember that? After 2020, Biden and Harris tried to give out subsidies to farmers and you'd get moved to the top of the list based on your ethnicity. And Stephen Miller and his America First Legal Fund fought that and they won because you know what? That's actually unconstitutional, lady. If you actually had a couple brain cells in there running around, you might get it. The fact that these people are doing that, they're accusing Donald Trump or Stephen Miller, frankly, of doing the exact same stuff they are actually engaging in in the here and now. In this election, or they are using rhetoric of taking it by force. Mm -hmm. That is what this. That is what they mean, and that's what they're doing when they are inciting <clears throat> violence and hatred against Latinos, against Black Americans, against Americans who don't have children. There is no inciting of violence against any of these groups. And you know what? <laughs> these groups actually are overwhelmingly now for Donald Trump. Think about it. Think about how much these groups have come out for Trump. You're looking at a national poll there, Latinos, 49% voting for Trump, over 38% for Kamala Harris. Think about what's going on in the black population in America. Think about specifically black men. What a challenge she's had there. She's had to drag out Obama, who has to accuse them of being sexist. How dare they not vote for Kamala? It's not working. And you guys are going to double down on this nonsense.